Following the coup that ousted Niger's democratic government, multiple countries imposed sanctions on the nation. The European Union has imposed sanctions on Niger, which include prohibiting travel, freezing assets, and limiting support to those implicated in the coup. Before this, Nigeria and the ECOWAS had already imposed sanctions, with Nigeria stopping the import of Nigerian goods and cutting off the power supply to Niger and Côte d'Ivoire. In addition, the World Bank stopped funding Niger, the United States stopped providing humanitarian aid, and France stopped working on development initiatives. Niger and the military dictatorship showed their ability to exercise authority in the face of international pressure by remaining firm in the face of these sanctions and retaliating with their prohibitions and penalties. They even made threats to cancel the proposal to build a trans-Saharan gas pipeline that would carry gas to Europe. In October, the Niger government formally declared that all exports of cooking gas, also known as liquefied petroleum gas, would be immediately suspended until further notice. This achievement underscores Niger's insistence on prioritizing indigenous manufacturing to meet domestic demand, as reported by Reuters. Authorities clarify that if a surplus occurs, businesses can seek authorization to resume exports. Before we continue, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and turn on notifications to be updated with more exciting and educative content. It's important to note that Niger primarily exports gas to neighboring Nigeria. Both nations had signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Petroleum Product Importation in 2020, the agreement formalized in the presence of the respective Ministers of State for Petroleum from the Niger Republic and Nigeria was seen as a significant step forward. The Nigerian minister remarked that this collaboration would be mutually beneficial in addressing the surplus products of Niger and the market demand in Nigeria. However, due to escalating tensions and Nigeria's opposition to Niger, LPG supply had to cease. This situation poses a challenge for Nigeria as it is in urgent need of LPG. Liquefied petroleum gas is crucial for cooking, heating, and vehicles. Its price in Nigeria has surged dramatically reaching an unprecedented level of over 1,000 Nigerian naira per kilogram from its previous rate of 750 naira. The Nigerian Association of Liquefied Petroleum Gas Marketers had previously cautioned about potential price increases due to fluctuations in foreign exchange rates and international market activities. In response to the export suspension, Niger plans to utilize the surplus LPG for various domestic activities. The decision to halt LPG exports to Nigeria can be traced back to the Nigerian president's role in encouraging ECOWAS to intervene in Niger's internal matters and carry out military intervention. The president sought Nigeria's parliament's approval to invade Niger, causing heightened tensions between the two nations. In response, Niger initiated the cutoff of LPG exports to Nigeria marking the beginning of their strategic response. As the situation escalated Nigeria cut off its electricity supplies to Niger this action severely impacted Niger which relies on Nigeria for 70% of its power supply and intensified pressure on the country's leaders. In Abuja the capital of Nigeria, West African military chiefs convened to formulate a joint response, while a high-level delegation arrived in Niger for negotiations these events unfolded just one week after the coup that shook the fragile nation of Niger. The leaders of the economic community of West African states ECOWAS had imposed trade and financial sanctions on Niger giving the coup leaders a one-week ultimatum to reinstate Niger's democratically elected president or face potential military intervention Abdel Fattah Musa. The ECOWAS Commissioner for Political Affairs Peace and Security emphasized that the military option is the very last resort but ECOWAS must be prepared for the possibility. A delegation from the ECOWAS led by former Nigerian head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar engaged in talks in Niger to address the crisis. Nigeria the current chair of ECOWAS and a significant military and economic power in West Africa, pledged to take a firm stance against the increasing incidents of coups in the region since 2020. Mali and Burkina Faso both under junta rule issued warnings that any military intervention in their neighbor would be considered a declaration of war against them. Russia issued a strong warning stating that any military intervention in Niger would lead to a protracted confrontation. This warning came after ECOWAS revealed its plans to assemble a standby force according to the Russian Foreign Ministry such an intervention would cause destabilization across the Sahel region. ECOWAS remained open to diplomatic solutions but reiterated that all options including the use of force as a last resort were on the table, a sentiment echoed by Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu. 
the U.S. while not explicitly endorsing military action called on the coup leaders to step aside and allow the restoration of Niger's democratic constitution. The crisis took a new turn when Niger issued a clear warning to Europe. If Europe intervened in Niger's internal affairs in any way, Niger threatened to halt the Trans-Saharan gas pipeline which is crucial for Europe's energy security. The Saharan gas pipeline had been conceived in the 1970s to diversify Europe's energy suppliers reducing its heavy dependence on Russia for natural gas. In January 2002 the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and Algeria's national oil and gas company Sonatrac laid the foundation for the project by signing a Memorandum of Understanding. A feasibility study conducted in collaboration with PensPen Limited confirmed the pipeline's technical and economic viability in September 2006. Subsequently, on February 20, 2009 NNPC and Sonatrac reached an agreement to advance the draft memorandum of understanding involving three governments and a joint venture agreement. A significant milestone was achieved on July 3, 2009 when the energy ministers of Nigeria, Niger, and Algeria signed an intergovernmental agreement. Niger's crucial role in this pipeline project was evident due to its geographic position between Nigeria and Algeria. If Niger declined to participate the entire pipeline project would collapse. The situation highlighted the geopolitical and economic factors at play emphasizing the delicate balance between regional stability, international alliances, and energy security in the Sahel region. The proposed pipeline route stretches from Nigeria's Wari region north through Niger and culminates in Hassi Rumel Algeria from there it would connect to existing pipelines including Trans-Mediterranean, Maghreb, Europe, Medgaz, and Galsi pipelines collectively supplying Europe from Algeria's Mediterranean coast. The TSGP is anticipated to span approximately 4,680 km in total with segments covering 1,370 km in Nigeria, 841 km in Niger, and 2,310 km in Algeria. It is expected to have an annual capacity of up to 30 billion cubic meters of natural gas with a diameter ranging from 48 to 56 inches. Initially, the pipeline was envisioned to be operational by 2015 with an estimated investment of around $1 billion for pipeline construction and an additional $3 billion for gas gathering centers. The construction and operation of the pipeline are intended to be a collaboration between the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NNPC, Sonatrac Algeria's National Oil and Gas Company and the NNPC and Sonatrac were to jointly hold 90% of the shares while Niger would retain the remaining 10% several international entities including Russia's Gazprom, Indian company Gale. France's Total SA, Italy's ENISPA and Royal Dutch Shell expressed interest in participating in the project. However, the future of the TSGP became uncertain following the military coup in Niger in July. This event led ECOWAS to contemplate troop deployment. The delicate situation emerged as Europe, Nigeria, Algeria, and ECOWAS found themselves entangled in the pipeline's fate. Europe seeking dependable alternative energy sources, viewed the TSGP as a necessity given the deteriorating energy relations with Russia. For Europe, the pipeline project represented a promising solution to rising energy poverty across the continent. Amidst these challenges, experts have stressed the importance of peaceful dialogue and understanding. They emphasized that Niger's cooperation was vital for the pipeline's success and any attempts to corner the country could lead to the collapse of the entire project. The involvement of Mali and Burkina Faso supportive of Niger in the event of an ECOWAS intervention added complexity to the situation. The fate of the Trans-Saharan gas pipeline hangs in the balance requiring careful diplomacy and collaboration among all stakeholders. Europe's pursuit of energy security Nigeria's regional leadership and the stability of the Sahel region are intricately linked to the success of this ambitious project. As for whom Nigerians blame for this state of affairs, there is little definitive evidence one way or another. Under a regime like that of the junta in Niamey, scoping public opinion is next to impossible, and any poll results are at best indicative. In August, a survey by a polling firm, Premise Data, found that 79% of respondents supported the junta and its actions, but the sample size was small and non-representative. On the whole, the junta has sought to rally citizen support by casting its power grab as a struggle with France, the former colonial power, which took a tough line with the generals following the August takeover. But whether political sentiment is with the junta or anti-junta sentiment is repressed, the sanctions regime has not translated into overt domestic political pressure on the generals. 
Do you think Niger's decision to cut off exports of cooking gas to Nigeria was the best? What do you think will be the implications of this decision to both countries and which country will stand to lose more? Please leave your answers and reviews in the comment section. Also, like this video and share it with others. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.